The link in the description is only there to see the source material. Do not under any circumstance go to these people with the intent to be a dick. I don't support witch hunts or lynch mobbing, so don't be either. As for the subjects themselves, my video is for the purposes of criticism and entertainment. Take care and leave it. My content is not here to start drama. Please do not treat it like it is. Yep, that's me. Now you're probably asking yourself how I ended up in such a situation, and to tell you the truth, I have not a fucking clue. But if for some weird reason I were trying to rationalize it, I would say it all started when... Aha! Doodle Tones, my senpai! Oh, hi... you... You thought the locks could keep I, me out- I don't know who you are. Wait, 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 seriously? Look, I have a long list of associates, so you're gonna need to narrow it down a bit. Wait, 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 <laughs> fucking wait, seriously? Come on, I'm the guy who shit posts a lot in the Cloud Palace. You're still gonna need to narrow it down further. How about now? Oh, Fingergate Boy! How could I forget about you? It tends to happen when you don't have all the time in the world to do what you want to do, but anyways, back to me breaking and entering. Ah, yeah, of course. Now that you've broken in, what kind of evil scheme do you have planned? Well, you see... Fuck, I forgot what my evil plan was. Wonderful. Don't patronize me. If I wanted that, I would have talked to my parents. Sure thing, Jen. Uh, but since you're here, I want to cover a pair of videos by a Nicholas E. Miranda. I guess since you're here, you know, we could do a co-op on it. Okay, Doodle, that sounds like one of the most cliche ways for one of these videos to go. Which is exactly why I'm all in. Let's do it. Alright, so this one has been a long time coming. Nicholas E. Miranda is a commentator who has a history of getting into fights with people and releasing commentaries at a rate that could make Doodle Circa 2016 rethink her production speed. A couple years back, he made a couple videos that cover a very infamous commentary chain. It's called The Blob That Ate Everyone, previously known to my longer time viewers as The Joshua Tree. But for new viewers, it was a commentary chain that diverged so haphazardly off of a video that I did in 2016 reviewing the My Little Pony movie Rainbow Rocks and has gone so far out of control that it's often forgot about just how many fucking videos are in this godforsaken chain. Back to the point, Nicholas's videos cover a guy called Blood Red Deadeye who covered Bubbling Brooks' commentary on As Elf 101 which covered the other video Nicholas covered, a video by Emily Is Here, or as she was known as then, Blaze of Arcana, whose video may seem familiar to anyone who saw that video I did with YouTube Dude like a few years ago. Yeah, it goes that deep. Thank you for noticing. We'll get to why we kept this video in production for so long at the end of the video, but for Nick's case, please don't write us off merely because we covered a quote-unquote dead topic. There is a purpose to this, and we'll get to why later. Anyway, we're gonna start with the Blood Red Dead Eye video, so let's begin. Hello everyone, I'm back with another commentary. This time it's gonna be on Dead Eye. So, it's obviously a text commentary, it looks like. So, let's go, shall we? Man, the live-action adaptation of Cars sure took a weird direction now, didn't it? Yeah, sorry about the odd subtitles you'll see sometimes pop up on the screen. That's my bad. See, oftentimes Nicholas will mumble his points to the point of being genuinely inaudible, even in my absurd comprehension skills. And there's really not much I can do about that other than say, Nicholas, feel free to speak up. We need to be able to hear what your points are before we can say agree or debunk them. Okay, I need to get good at editing if I'm going to get anywhere. I'm sure Ty can teach me his ways. Yeah, like that's gonna happen. Yeah. There's very elaborate in there. What's there to elaborate on? Brooke assures herself that Digital Ty can teach her some editing tricks because he was commonly seen as the best editor in the CC. And Deadeye is sarcastically retorting, saying that he doubts that Ty will teach Brooke anything. And not only that, why is it a text commentary? Really, I don't see why. Well, you see, my soon-to-be Kingdom Hearts protagonist, 
The reason this is a text commentary is more than likely due to the fact that Deadeye may not have the necessary requirements to make a more vocal response. Given that while I don't know what Deadeye is using, the production values tells me it's likely that either he doesn't have the means to put that much effort into his content as he desires, or he's a troll. Which is probably the more likely answer, but do it, do me a solid and just humor me and by extension Nicholas for a bit, okay? Cool, thanks. By the way, not to say that there's anything necessarily wrong about covering a troll, as you can still cover one and be correct, despite popular belief. But I wouldn't mind if you actually elaborate on why making a text commentary is a bad thing, and or elaborate on how he could fix the issue. Which I'm sure you can do, but unfortunately they probably won't get around to it until the final mix version comes out where you can fight the black guy from Frozen 2. Like, not everyone has the money for a microphone, Nicholas. Not everyone knows how to record their audio on a phone, if you're any indicator. And sometimes making a text-based commentary is genuinely the only method someone has to get a point across. You have to make do with what you got, and it's such a shame you don't invest in a video editor. Wait. What in the living, breathing, almighty fuck just happened to the video quality? Um, yeah. I want you to keep the quality thing in mind since that's really going to be repeated throughout the whole entire commentary. And not only that, but it was just a joke with the old fader. And I can actually kind of still see the quality just fine either way. Okay, Nick Fury, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about, so let me just clarify that what Brooke was doing wasn't a joke, as it was there to set the tone and plot for the rest of the video, as right after, Brooke becomes trapped in the elevator until tech support can get Brooke out. Now, sure, what Brooke does afterwards in the skit is a joke. By the way, not to freak you out, but you only have like half an hour of oxygen left in there, so d just don't panic. Uh, or, you know you might not be able to live anymore. WHAT?! Hey! Hey! You know I can't hear you, right? I just got this old dude telling me to keep quiet and play with my technology and uh, we waste all my oxygen. However, jokes and setting up plot are not usually the same thing, unless you can prove otherwise. I've got other problems. Taking out the minor one that you both missed being it's not the quality of the video, but rather the lighting and the keyframing that Brooke needed to establish for the intro skit, there's still the unfortunate problem of this being subjective at best and a non-issue at worst. Even had Deadeye saw a drop in quality, your I see it just fine wouldn't suddenly change Deadeye's complaint. Now that said, Deadeye's complaint is beyond vague that even had Brooke watched his video, there's actually nothing she can obtain from it, so it's not like there's not a point to be had here, it's just not the one that you are making. Crap, crap. Crap, I, I, I can't go, go like this. Seriously, girl. You've got some serious fucking explaining to do, here. Um, do you not know that this is a joke? Because it is after all. There is a difference between a joke and acting in a scene. Please learn what that difference is. Alright, so ignoring the repetition that this point brings, I want to focus on Deadeye for a second, because they seem to have the attention span of me at 3 in the morning, cowering in fear of my sleep paralysis demon. Considering that if you look at this clip that comes immediately after what Deadeye played... Again... This is the fourth time this week. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Our repair guys are... Uh... So, does the red wire connect to the blue wire, or does the blue wire connect to the red wire? How the heck am I supposed to know? I don't know, maybe it's because you're the technician? Ugh, screw it. I'm just gonna start connecting things and hope I don't explode. Isn't that a safety hazard? You know what, faggot? You're a safety hazard! Shut up! Anyway, this elevator comm is only one way, so I can't hear your screams of terror. I recommend you find something to do to preoccupy yourself with. I don't know, maybe like you have a smartphone on you or something? I'm pretty sure kids like you have phones on all the time. You can clearly see that she does attempt to explain it right afterwards. Look, it's alright, I get it. Not all birds are large enough to support massive big brain plays. I mean, come on, just look at Mordecai. <laughs> Skipping some pointless fucking bullshit from Dirty Fucking Bop. Hashtag good riddance to Ryan Rhino Mills. Uh, I wanna stop here and address Deadeye myself, because, uh... Brooke was never in Bop. That is all. Again, it was a joke. You're taking it seriously. No, he's not. Especially not here because he's critiquing Brooke's intro skit as something pointless, not trying to retort it. Now, no, it's not a good criticism because Brooke's commentaries were trying to tell a story, and this was, you know, 
a part of that story. But regardless, that doesn't mean he's merely taking a joke, which isn't a joke to begin with, but I digress, at face value. Also, this is the third time you've made this point in a row. But over the rubber duck, please find something new to talk about, considering listening to the same point again and again grows very dull very quickly. Actually, keep this repetition in mind, because I want to come back to it later. Not only that, but... Yeah, people who had seen the video itself are not going to understand now. I've watched the videos, and I still don't understand Mills Kohai's relevance here. Oh my god, he is an actual person. I thought it was just an AI made by the CIA to keep track of the CC so we don't discover how to cure mosquito bites. Doodle, why didn't you warn me about this? Because Project BTMF was supposed to be a secret, and you just exposed it to the world. Oof. What do you mean? Why could they actually mention that or not? I remember mentioning that group in 2018. I know, right? Defiling a corpse like that should be against the law. Before getting into this degree chain mess, I would like to preface this by saying that I know Adzelf has disowned the video. However, I would still like to get feedback on where she could improve. This, kids, just goes to show that Annabeth Ride has no concept of what beating a dead horse actually means. Um, that was not said in the video one time. Not one time was being a dead horse even said right there. Just saying that the new field was disowned, but that doesn't mean it can't hit the free pass from destructive criticism. Hey, Sarah? Yes? Am I the only one that realized that Nicholas completely had the point sore over his head to an absurd degree as essentially Deadeye is saying that Brooke doesn't understand the phrase beating a dead horse because of the fact that she's hitting a video that she knows is disowned? No. Okay, but am I the only one who looks at the rest of his channel, sees the rules set by Nicholas's channel, and finds it really funny that Nicholas is defending the concept of covering an old video despite several times within his commentary career telling people that they should never do this? <laughs> Probably. Thereby rendering her video completely and utterly pointless. Not just absolutely irrelevant. Refer back to my earlier point of what I said just now that you can't comment on a disowned video. Hey Sarah, do you want to cover the potential he said you can't cover or the potential you can cover point? Because both are problems. Dibs on the can com, I mean point. Alright, well to get to the possibility that Nicholas said that you can't cover a disowned video out of the way, as it is difficult to tell, but... Had he denied the possibility that one could cover a video the initial creator doesn't stand behind, he's therein contradicting his previous point, as Nicholas was initially arguing that Brooke could cover Azelf's video, with Deadeye claiming that it's beating a dead horse, before coming here and agreeing with Deadeye's initial center point of argumentation. Grant you, this presumes that he had said can't instead of can in this interjection, but then at that point, he severely needs to learn how to enunciate better. Now that you can cover a disowned video, Angle is flawed as well, simply due to how Deadeye wasn't saying that Brooke can't cover a disowned video here, but that it would be redundant to cover a video that the target already knows is bad. Now, I don't agree with this point, given that one can use the video as an example of problems the target content overall has, or can make points that the target isn't aware are issues. But instead, you made a point that has as much staying power as planes too. Luckily, there are a ton of degrees I'm touching on, but here's the fullest anyway. Well, at least she listed the full degree list. Hashtag quality of life improvement. Um, if that's really all you have to say, you could have just not left it in if you really agree with the video. Literally, where in that segment did Deadeye say that he agrees with Brooke's video? What Deadeye was doing was making an yes, albeit redundant interjection to give Brooke's video a begrudging compliment in saying that because she lists off the degrees at the beginning of her video, that being able to watch through her video has become a little bit easier. Brooke wasn't even making a point to agree with, so he's not coming in to merely agree with the video, as you say he is. But wait, there's more. Since you're supposed to be criticizing it, you're not being negative. You're supposed to disagree with the video, not agree with the video. Not inherently, since even if Deadeye was somehow agreeing with the video, how would that inherently be a bad thing? Given that unless all you're doing with your points are just agreeing with everything they say, then it should be okay to admit that there are some aspects your target is doing good in every now and then. Positive critique is actually a thing a commentator could do under the right circumstances, and what it does is tell the person they're covering what aspects of the video they're doing right and can be continued for further projects. 
grant you, you still need to be able to, you know, elaborate on why a thing that's being done right is good, and Deadeye doesn't do that. But there's nothing inherently wrong with agreeing to an argument or complimenting an aspect of a video if you're able to explain and further elaborate on the discussion. Yet that still doesn't detract from her video's fucking shittiness. Not in the goddamn slightest. Yeah, but that still didn't debunk anything, so your statement still point was that you did say you were agreeing with the video just now. No, he's not. Going back to my previous point about what Deadeye's interjection was used for, this is further evidence that it was not used for the sake of agreement. In full context, he was using that compliment from earlier as a setup to a pot shot at the quality of Brooke's commentary. This is not that hard to figure out when you let the context play in full. By great Odin's toenails, how did I return to this foul world? I thought I had already killed you, Fingergate. Uh, okay, you know what? I, I'm gonna drop the voice. Dude, just give me a sec. I gotta go find my bat before Joni sees this. You do that. Because I have a point. So Nicholas is going to skip a lot throughout Deadeye's video. And I do mean a lot. To the point we won't have any clue as to what Deadeye is trying to respond to in context. When re-editing his video, I tried to keep it as it was in the initial video, skips and all. So if it seems like Brooke has just kind of disappeared from this video entirely after some point, it's because she has. I'll try to use the context of Brooke's original video if it's needed, but Nicholas, this is a problem though, as not knowing what Deadeye is responding to is going to muddy the context and make viewers like Sarah and I completely lost as to what's going on. You should talk, lady. Seeing as the entirety of your video crapped out in quality when you weren't even started with your commentary. See what I mean that the quality parts be constantly said? Well gee, Nicholas, it's almost as if this is the exact shit that I was talking about. Alright, so I wanted to get it out real quick because a lot has just kind of held this video back from technical difficulties to just me being lazy. Ozzy, you clearly sound sick here. And it doesn't look good on your end. You admit to laziness in both the annotation and your little disclaimer. If you want to improve, you need to cut that out the best you can. Then I was trying to use Brooke's intro skit, you know, where he makes the claim that the video dropped in quality, where it wasn't a mere drop in quality, but more of a choice on Brooke's end to make the video seem darker from the setting, as a way of playing a game of hypocrisy Una with Brooke, saying that because her quality dipped earlier in the video that she has no room to talk about as Elf being lazy in her own video. Do the world a favor and keep your shit in line. Seriously. You need to put the kibosh on your bullshit before it gets any worse. Yeah, I already said twice just now about what you're taking seriously, so... Yeah. Alright, so this is like... the 60th time he's made this exact point already and it's actively getting infuriating. I'm not gonna go full rage mode and say you should kill yourself or anything, but just find something new to point out already, man, because this shit is getting older than Master Roshi. Like, despite how much it actively makes things confusing given your production values, or lack thereof, makes things really difficult to keep track of, there is no shame in skipping points if all you're going to do is essentially repeat the same two points ad nauseum. That said, how you're going about this repetition is actually awful, as not only are you just referring back to initial points without expanding on anything, essentially using the one already made point to try to speak for itself, but here we don't even know what Deadeye is taking seriously. I couldn't be bothered to expect very much out of some girl who throws bigger hissy fits than some spoiled brat in her birthday party, or for that matter, some SJW no one gives a shit about. As much as I loathe these fucking SJW fuck-ups. Why are you so music about backing up your claim? Because that happens in some parts of this video, believe it or not. Alright, so I get this is something you elaborate on later in the video, which has its own problems, but we'll get to that. But holy mother of titty, this wording is ass and not the good kind. Like legit, I think I'm having a minor stroke trying to comprehend this sentence. I can't tell if you're trying to say that the music is too loud, or if them having background music is bad. Or if I'm not the only one having a stroke here. Like, honestly, Grammarly is not your enemy here. 
Now, you do elaborate later as to how your issue with Deadeye's rock music bleeding into the original videos, which, honestly, I perfectly agree with, given it can be distracting depending on the music choice. However, unless your audience were somehow psychic type and knew what you were talking about before you had explained, it still wouldn't work given that the original context doesn't even have background music from Deadeye bleeding into the source material. But there's a few issues I have with this intro. Now this first point, you can take it or leave it as it chalks up to personal preference, but the pacing for this intro, for lack of a better term, is dead. It starts off okay, but then the names and pictures start to linger on screen for too long, and with the slow keyframing, it doesn't sit well with me. So this point fails on at least nine different levels, and now I have sickness. Hey, quick question. Why the frick does this pick of Rainbow Dash have a white background? Blaze, please, I'm sure you can find more PNGs in Rainbow Dash that give you a transparent background. I'm sure I don't need to explain to you how Google and Damn! Okay, I'm going okay. now what the fuck am I having to suffer through? Um, I don't... I didn't hear suffer what time. I... 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 Okay. What even is the meaning of life at this point? I... I have no words. This point is just... What? Okay, pretending for a minute that this is somehow real and not just some kind of wet dream involving textbooks again, why does it matter that you didn't hear the word suffer? Since Deadeye was just saying that the bit dragged on for too long and he suffered because of it, I'm pretty sure you don't need to hear someone say die to be able to get a bullet wound in the brain. I still have no words. This point was stunning, and not in a good way. Banging my head to Pantera while skipping some more fast forwarding clusterfuck, by the way. Okay, here's the problem I have this video. A lot of stuff are being repeated, taking jokes seriously, having music during so proof for evidence, and by the way, it's also going to be said more than once. Are you- are we really sure we aren't just covering a really, really clever bot who has no idea of self-awareness yet? This is not shitpost bot levels of sentience. Furthermore, Nicholas, this is literally Deadeye saying that he's skipping part of the video. It's got the same purpose as a skip cart. There shouldn't be any problem if a skip cart just happens to be repeated. I'm sorry, Annabeth Ride but I'm too goddamn busy headbanging to epic fucking badass Pantera to even give a shit anymore. Yeah, that's my evidence to back up my career about music. What? The fact that Deadeye is literally playing music over this section to say that he's essentially given up on covering the video is evidence that he plays music without backing up his own claims of Brooke's video being somehow bad in some way? Well, fuck, guess you got us with this epic evidence that Deadeye plays music. Well, goodbye, this man's career. It was nice knowing you. This further exacerbates the abhorrent placement of the point from earlier, though, because, to recap, there was no musical overlay over Brooke's video when Nicholas initially made his absurdly worded point. Like, this is the literal first time from Nicholas's video that we, as the viewers, would have seen this overlap in music, as it happens nowhere else. So how this proves his initial statement about the music is beyond me. But that's essentially all of Nicholas's Blood Red Deadeye commentary. He moves on to his final thoughts, nothing more to cover. That said, we're not done. Wait, what do you mean, except I mean doodle tones? We still have his commentary on Blaze of Arcana to cover. You know, the longer one. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm in danger. Well, with what? I'm back to the concert. Video. <sighs> you know, at first, this was gonna be a co op. Well, well. Welly, well, well, well. Well. What's context? You give us nothing. Like, sure, I know what the context is, I'm previously in the degree chain twice for god's sakes. But like, someone who stumbles upon your video will be very lost as to what's going on. However, we didn't really get anywhere with- Wait a second. You did not say the name of the person you were going to do a co-op with. Most of the people who cancel the co-op, they say the name of the person despite the fact it's not an actual co-op. But you didn't do that. And that would be rude, and it will take forever to fight out on your own, and they would probably not fight out unless that person who was going to do the court but didn't said it themselves. What? Okay, several things wrong here. One of the obvious ones being, why does Blaze of Arcana need to announce who his co-op partners are, since you mentioned other commentators do it, 
but that's implying it's a requirement, which it isn't. Plus, there are plenty of reasons why Obscurian wouldn't want to name his co-op partner, like, say, if said co-op partner wanted to keep their involvement private, or Blades of Arcana wanted to respect that decision, as an example. Yeah, we don't all need to know about the co-op between them and Richard Absorbent. <gasps> Doodle! How could you just dox a man like that? Secondly, am I the only one who noticed that Nicholas, despite getting on to Blaze of Arcana's case about not telling us who the co-op partner was, winds up ending his very same interjection, asking the person who was the co-op partner to out themselves somewhere? Like, I get your shit's not scripted, but pick a lane, kid. <laughs> What Sherry thinks is he showed images of two people of the characters who were used as the after said video. However, you're only commenting on one person and you're not commenting on a co op where both of those characters were used. Ugh, fuck, my co op partner is broken again. Okay, so now as I wait for Sarah to gather his surroundings again, Nicholas. Blaze of Arcana is doing a commentary on a co-op between Joshua and I. Admittedly, Joshua has like, a few points out of the entire video, so the focus does wind up on me more often than Josh, but at the end of the day, Josh is still there and is my co-op partner, and we were both pony trash in that video. Violet is hot! Alright, I'm back, did I miss anything? Nothing but net. If you use more than one, why? More than one what? Look, Nick, if I want to make more than one mac and cheese, I will. And nobody can fucking stop me! We said fire commentaries. This and that whip off. Now it's just snake. Burst fire commentaries. Blazing fire commentaries to burst fire commentaries, huh? Well, first of all, Nihilistic Snake's burst fire commentaries were explicitly a series Snake did as a series of one-shots of commentaries. You know, the kind of videos where only one point is made. Where the name probably stemmed from the fact that one-shots at the end of the day are a small burst of content that just comes in, does its thing, and then just leaves. Whereas Blaze of Arcana's full commentaries were probably called Blazing Fire commentaries, strictly due to the fact that they went by the name of Blaze of Arcana. Like, the names may be similar, sure, but it does seem to be more of a coincidence than anything, and unless you can definitively provide evidence to us that Blaze was trying to take a page from Nihilistic Snake's book, then this is an assumption at best. No matter how fast I run, I can never escape from my past. Okay, I'm going to use the help of a new tree named after me. If this tree isn't bad, it'll spoil the- Okay, why? Why are you cutting? Him off mid sentence. Why are you cutting them off midpoint, my dude? You can't do that. That's illegal. Nicholas, Blaze of Arcana is going off on the production aspect of the video, specifically the subtitles, plain background, and lack of background music. These points don't require Joshua to finish his first sentence talking about how the Joshua tree, now known as the blob that ate everyone, needs to be stopped. Like, if Blaze's point actually addressed anything that Joshua was saying, yeah, that would be important to address. But ironically, the only one here that's cutting people off during an important part of their point is you. And you can't commentate on two degrees. Hold on, do you think Joshua's a different degree to me? Considering the degree chain, then probably, but I don't think that's what he's referring to. But anyways, yes, Nick, you can cover multiple degrees. It helps with covering multiple bad videos in a chain so that you don't have to cover them all separately. And personally speaking, it makes the video more interesting, so why is it inherently a bad thing to do so? Especially considering the fact that you bring it up out of nowhere and don't elaborate on why it's a problem. You better tell the class why it's a problem before I break out my imaginary girlfriend on you. He'll do it too, I've seen him try. You cannot come to on all of the you need to stay on top. Covering multiple degrees isn't inherently going off of topic though. Considering a degree chain, as we're seeing here, is all one discussion about a review of My Little Pony, if Blaze were to cover multiple degrees of this chain, it'd still technically be talking about the My Little Pony review, so it would be on topic. Mind you, yeah, there can be instances where doing so can go off topic, but hashtag not all degree chains. 
Why this white background? Why these subtitles? Maybe he explains it in the introduction. He used it because people probably cannot understand whatever it is he is too trying to say. But we don't explain it. Blaze was just dropped into this video with Joshua talking about a tree named after him, and that's where Blaze started having issues with the production that we see from the get-go. Now, realistically, considering the context of this video and how it came off the coattails of a huge decree chain that got onto Joshua's case for not being properly understood and had people confused as to what he was talking about, yeah, the subtitle should have made sense in that context, but given how Blaze was still confused here, well, here we are. How even playing devil's advocate and giving you the benefit of the doubt that they did explain it after, you don't show this, which would do wonders to help your argument. One that is also based on a maybe, might I add, which is not a good foundation for an argument. Great job of confusing the first five seconds. Why is this white background here? Out of the huge library of moving backgrounds you have, Doodle, you pretty much use a white background. And I guess if Joshua edited this, then maybe I can understand, given how Joshua can't edit worth- Even so, doesn't Joshua have a background already? Then just why not use that? Why does the background matter? Realistically, it doesn't. However, Blaze was bringing this up in confusion to the production aspect of my video. You know, the visuals and shit. And specifically, within the background, the simplicity of it all, when I was known at the time for just having a fuck ton of backgrounds. Apparently. I didn't really realize that was a thing, but sure. But the point is, considering that this is a white background, it came off as jarring when compared side by side to other things that I made around the time. Also, the subtitles could maybe work, however there's a closed caption feature with YouTube. Why not just use that feature? And yet, you don't explain what it is. Do they really need to? The fact Blaze said to use the closed caption feature on YouTube instead of making your own subtitles will imply closed captions are an alternative to adding subtitles while editing. Doing the basic math would show Blaze is suggesting another way of putting Joshua's words on the screen. Instead, or, you know, Joshua can just learn to enunciate his words correctly instead of mumbling like a baby. I'm Johnny, bitch! <laughs> Hello, YouTubers. Joshua428 speaking. Wait, you dragged out your voice longer to the two and with repeated yourself. What? Repeated yourself? Repeated yourself doing exactly that? It's not a good habit, you know. And this was the difficulty that is manually subtitling a Nicholas E. Miranda commentary. In any case, this point is a lot of things. Haphazardly placed, irrelevant to what Joshua or Blaze of Arcana said, hyperbolic, and like, it didn't really need to be. Unless you're referring to Blaze repeating points from the earlier degree fuckfest that was the initial Joshua Tree trunk, but in that sense, you do not explain that, which is a problem since it's referring to another video that would have been deleted by the time your video came out. Also, I could argue that Blaze of Arcana isn't repeating themselves, given how they point out their confusion towards the background and the subtitles, and then goes on to elaborate their issues with the background, and then gives a devil's advocate for the subtitles. I know I'm not the smartest tool in the shed, and that I look kind of dumb with a finger and a thumb in the shape of an L on my forehead, but last I checked, that's not repeating yourself. Before I begin this, I would like to apologize for my bad behavior. It was childish and stupid. I'm so sorry for being so childish and stupid. Even though I can't change for the better because of how bad of a conversator I truly am. Okay, in all seriousness, however, your apology is a crock of shit. Wow. Okay, Kermonet, I deeply apologize. Slayer here has by far got to be the most unlikable one in this tree. Really? Joshua can't even apologize without having someone calling him out on- What is with? It's the same joke over and over again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you catch any of that? God, I wish I could understand whatever that was. Like, I caught that it was in reference to something playing over and over again, but like, literally nothing has been repeated to this point, so I'm just- deeply confused as to what this is in reference to. The closest bet I got is that I really enjoyed Steven Universe the movie. On being an admittedly less than satisfactory commentator at times. This isn't even a point, this is just you being an unsympathetic twat. You know, it's just one thing I dislike. Hey, you're still doing it with the other degrees going on. Drag, 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 drag. Drag, 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 dr
drag. Ugh, this is annoying. Blaze was dragging out the context strictly due to the fact that there was a lot there. My point wasn't typically what you would consider short, so tirades like this typically will drag on a context a little bit more than normal. It's not really Blaze's fault. Now, I suppose the counter-argument of, but Blaze could speed this up could be brought up, and sure. But you're also missing the point of their joke. Blaze's point following this interjection explains, pretty redundantly may I add, that Slayer of Demon's point about how Joshua's apology is an, and I quote, crock of shit was merely a joke that I own of her analyzed. With this, Blaze wanted to show some form of frustration building towards this point by having their avatar fade in while I'm talking and showing exactly how long I go on my point for, which would not have been conveyed as well as it is if they sped it up. Now, no, this isn't correct. Blaze of Arcana absolutely missed the point of Slayer's interjection where he straight up says blatantly, in all seriousness, your apology is a crock of shit, which implies some form of push away to the joking aspect of it all, and even following this was an explanation as to why Joshua's apology was falsified in Slayer's eyes to begin with. I'm so sorry for being so childish and stupid, even though I can't change for the better because of how bad of a commentator I truly am. Okay, in all seriousness, however, your apologies are crock of shit. And you want to know why it's that? It's because you have apologised so many times throughout the past few years that it's not even funny. Not to mention you also wouldn't change your ways for the better due to how insincere you are. So it's not as if there isn't a point that will be made here soon, it's just not the one you're making. <laughs> Shut up! Oh my god, I don't care! The eclipse are over you. Why you don't care, other people are cute. Because they just don't know who it is. I just don't know who it is. Okay, now, this is a point I could agree with if you cited where else the media clip was used, but you don't, which makes it harder to see where you're coming from, especially considering that not everyone watches the exact same type of content and likely won't see it used as much compared to others. And unless you provide proof that this clip is overused, then I'm gonna have to ask you to stop its illegal conduct. Furthermore, regardless of if media clips are overused or not, you don't give a definitive reason as to why it's a problem. Because, as I see it, a media clip can enhance a joke or be used in a way to further a point if it's relevant to the topic of discussion. Now, did Blaze? That's subjective really, isn't it? I don't think it really furthered the discussion past showing us a negative emotion at a point that I was making. And humorly speaking, it's... whatever. But at the end of the day, this distaste over something being overused or overdone doesn't really make sense because the idea of a thing shouldn't be a problem. The execution should be what's criticized. Second, you attempt to argue Blaze of Arcana's subjectivity by using your own subjecti- Actually, no, 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 not even using your own subjectivity, but someone else's hypothetical subjectivity. Which is just, no, stop. This doesn't do anything to Blaze of Arcana's point unless you can prove that people do actually care. Unless this hypothetical was being used to say that no one cares that Blaze doesn't care, and in which case, stop. Because this does nothing to Blaze's use of media where they straight up use it in a sense to say that they, as an individual, do not care. We're at this point just playing apathy tennis. Third off, if for some reason you're talking about the media clip, it's from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I don't know why this matters unless you're attempting a really roundabout method of asking for the source Blaze of Arcana got their media clip from. In which case, you could have worded yourself so much better, but okay. With that said, if that isn't what you were doing, then I have to ask if you're saying you have no idea who cares, and in which case, that doesn't even do anything to your own hypothetical except make it ever the more confusing. Because your hypothetical seems to say that someone might care that Slayer of Demons deadass tried invalidating an apology, meaning you don't realistically need a concrete example to pull from here. You just need a hypothetical, followed by a point somewhere within the hypothetical to give it a reason to exist. Otherwise, well, I've got no clue as to what this interjection even is. And fourth off, how have we spent this long talking about a fucking media clip? Welcome to the old school Joshua Tree, Sarah, where commentaries were indeed a mistake. <sighs> okay, let me explain the situation clearly here. Since you seem to not realize what Slayer was doing, yeah, that was pretty much a joke. But he could have been serious also. You could joke and be serious at the same time, maybe. Like you actually mean, however, you could joke about by being sarcastic. And that could have been the same exact thing that he was doing. Okay, so this seemed to be the construction, the building blocks, if you will, to an actually good point about how jokes can have meanings behind them. Like, no joke, this point could have worked in your favor, 
If you didn't follow it up with the latter half of your point, seemingly calling Slayer's interjection sarcasm. Because newsflash, Nicholas, sarcasm still isn't supposed to be taken seriously, which is the main center point of Blaze's interjection. You took it way too seriously and just overanalyzed it. Like, really, who cares one bit about this? He was making a joke. And you just roll in like, oh, well, you were being too harsh. I did roll over that joke. With the image of the person to use as the avatar, go with it. We'll be over and over again. Alright, devil's advocacy time, but given how at that point it would just come down to the way the joke is executed and not the joke itself being overdone, humor is subjective after all, and how something is done could affect how the viewer may interpret the situation accordingly. For instance, why did the chicken cross the road is a very easily recognizable joke to a lot of different people, but there are tons of different takes of the punchline that a listener can take from. From the classically suicidal to get to the other side, to the more innocent to get to the phone booth and call home, or the lesser known to try and find his head. As a secondary and more relevant example, physical comedy can also find different forms that work to get those late night ha-has. Slipping on a banana peel on its own is a classic scenario that I would believe if you have told me it dated back to the Chaplin days, but it still returns time and time again to find new life with different outcomes each time. Be they not fall all the way as some anti-humor punchline, or they fall down 20 stories for some comedic slapstick. Look, my point is, at the end of the day, this is another instance of you rallying against the mere idea of something in a commentary, whereas you should be targeting the execution, and you really should stop doing this if you're against the idea of repetition in videos. When in all reality, he was making a simple joke. Sure, it wasn't all that funny. He was subjective. We have to finish that joke. Was funny, was funny. This immediately follows a point where you rally against a visual gag for being overdone in other videos. The irony escapes you. Also, how was that a joke? He was just saying that on him, be sarcastic about the apologies. And he might not even actually accept the apology, simply the fact that's not how YouTube works. So typically, it's kind of not a joke. Next time, we'll watch the video a couple times before opening up. <laughs> Those were words, I think, maybe, probably, hopefully. Okay, but to attempt to argue this point, one can view sarcasm as a form of joke. Given when you boil it down, sarcasm is just ironically stating a viewpoint that you don't agree with in an exaggerated manner. So that's where the joke would be. Mind you, this still isn't actually sarcasm, considering he says in all seriousness, but for the sake of this argument, fuck you. Also, Slayer may not accept the apology because that's not how YouTube works. Like, how does one even try to argue this? Like, this is actually pretty inane because we know Slayer doesn't accept the apology as demonstrated by his own video where he claims Joshua's apology isn't genuine. Like, this has nothing to do with how YouTube works. This is everything to do with how Slayer took the apology that Joshua Colby House gave. At first, I thought covering this video would be all fun and games. But as we progress through, my brain slowly continues to melt, like an ice cream sandwich on a midsummer day. But you could have just pointed that out then! But nope, you just overanalyzed this and took this obvious joke seriously. Please, give me any actual point of worth that- See what I mean that? He cracks points. It's always wrong to need to. You know, you actually kind of have a point there, Nick. However, I feel like you could have better elaborated on this by actually telling us how this actually drags on. Given circa 2017 obscure and hammered in how much it's a joke wouldn't even be that hard to expand upon since it goes on for like a minute. But here it doesn't seem properly demonstrated to us outside of look at it. Do you want to know why it's that? It's because you have apologized so many times throughout the past few years that it's not even funny. Not to mention you also wouldn't change your ways for the better due to how insincere you are. You say, as you're commentating on a video where Joshua has a background and subtitles, which were issues people had with his videos at the beginning of the Joshua Tree. Yeah, 
Bravo, he hasn't changed for the better at all. Hey, you know what's funny? Yeah, you say he improved in some things, and I can bring up a list of things he hasn't improved in. Yeah, roll that list, please. Okay. Let's see what it says right here. Reasons why Joshua has not really improved. He can't do comedy, right? Oh. I can't recall you see better. At this point, I'm honestly not sure which is worse. That lame attempt at a burn, or how blatant your lack of professionalism is by the way you actively have to stop to remind yourself what was even on the list to begin with. I'd say it's the hilarious lack of self-awareness to the fact that Nicholas stated prior this video that humor is subjective, and is no Ewing Blaze of Arcana here an attempt to disregard her point about Joshua's at the time lack of growth. Dead humor subjective. Even if folks people don't find it so funny, people may really find it fun. Yet, why does comedy always have to be a problem with commentary? Did he, did he just defeat the point of his own burn? Yep. Welcome to the material I work with. Still can't edit worth anything. Sometimes there's stuff he doesn't need to edit though. Such as? Go on, sir. What does Joshua not need to edit? Come on, man. I really need to know. The anxiety is killing me. Man! Just tell us already before I have to use the men's room! In any case, Blaze's point is based on, in general, how well Joshua was able to edit within his videos. So even if there are things he may not technically need to edit, there are still things he would, such as subtitles and interjections to his commentaries, that Blaze doesn't believe Joshua was able to do at the time. He overreacts to criticism. It would for the word to fit it himself, he said that they make good points, kind of. I'm just going to ignore for a minute how, once again, examples are not being given to point out how even if he did one time not overreact to criticism, that suddenly doesn't mean that he wouldn't overreact to criticism every other time. Admittedly, Blaze of Arcana also doesn't point out examples, and that's something you could have pointed out instead, but hey, that would imply you have any clue of what you're doing in this video. Furthermore, where? Where did he say it? And most importantly, when did he say that? Because Blaze of Arcana's video is from early 2017, if your example of Joshua giving an individual the benefit of doubt came after Blaze's point, this would be invalid evidence against the point being made because it would not have happened by the time Blaze of Arcana made her point about Joshua overreacting to critique. He still does commentaries out of spite. Right. You have got to be fucking kidding me. Well, that's it. Joshua still does commentaries out of spite. That's it. We're done here. End the video. He still shows points by the you don't explain how. Well, we almost got a good point out of this, except for the fact Nicholas cuts himself off while reading Blaze of Arcana's point, so we have no idea what he's actually arguing against. Clearly, he must have been so distracted by the mole people having just formed an anime club as from his very eyes that made him lose his train of thought and want to ask them about their taste in fictional women and how hard they simp for them. Sarah, I still have no plans to watch Simpho here. Or Jojo. He still acts immature. You look so evident. He doesn't know how to do his videos. Just... You don't need to explain or so please. Now see, was making a valid point against Blaze of Arcana really that difficult? <laughs> okay, even though that was a joke, I couldn't hear you say it. I can just see it probably said what you're saying just now, but I don't know that. I'm assuming here. Next time, be more queer with jokes. Okay, you know, I'm gonna be painfully honest. I've had wet dreams that make more sense than trying to understand what you just said, let alone what your point is. The best guess I got is that you think the music is saying what the text is saying, but due to how it's distorted, it's hard to make out, which, assuming I haven't suffered from the Mandela effect, wouldn't inherently ruin the joke because distortion makes the brain go haha -ha and laugh at dumb stuff. I, on the other hand, am stuck on how this was a joke to begin with. Like, Blaze was telling me to pay attention to the shortcomings that Joshua still had as of our co-op, and use that list you spent time arguing with as a list of her examples to the shortcomings that I'm ignoring. It's not really used as a joke in of itself, it's just used as like a final period on the overall point she was trying to make. You know, those two things anyway were sort of minor, and the one about backgrounds was a suggestion? Oh, yet the other ones weren't? To see what the points that were interjected and what weren't? That makes no sense! I'm super confused about this point. Are you trying to say that the other production issues were mere suggestions? Because if so, 
I guess, but with how Joshua at the time had a hard time enunciating his interjections, such like yourself, it often made it hard to understand what he was saying to a casual listener. And oftentimes, that was a critique lobbed at him during the time frame of 2016-2017. Otherwise, if that's not what you were arguing, then I'm totally lost, my dude. Spoiler, she didn't do any research. Not that this is a bad thing, so it's kind of funny for people to not get it if it's entertaining. I just need to say what two times. Explain. There are two different degree counters. Are we for reals actually arguing this? God. We sure do live in a commentary community. Aside from the already aforementioned poor voice work here, I would like to ask, how do you know Doodle Tones didn't do their research? For one, it is not required for a reviewer to watch the entirety of the series to do their research, and the fact that they've tolerated watching the show and reviewed it enough times to get a proper feel of the material makes your unscripted statement seem uninformed at best and ignorant at worst. Yeah, it does seem able me to respond without giving evidence. But I can't screenshot the Skype conversation. So basically you're saying that you couldn't provide evidence because you couldn't screenshot said evidence. Okay, either you know jack shit about computing or you're just too lazy to screenshot the evidence yourself. I'm picking the last Alright, this is fun to do sometimes. Let me take an argument that you're using that I also used against the same video and play devil's advocate. So Joshua says that he can't screenshot the evidence that he needs to provide. While yes, push, gazo, and shift plus print screen all work wonders, what if he's having some form of computer issues and he actually cannot screen cap the conversation between he and I all those months ago? Then you know what? He should have used some other form of tool that takes screenshots. Snipping tool, band cam, light shot, with this in mind. Also, you gotta love the fact he only need the flight. He only like use the same thing again. People can put such easy toys in the commentary, yet yeah, it's okay to use a image of a toy with your avatar. I just wanna point out before we get into this point that Sarah and I have been staring staring at this point for five minutes, wondering what the fuck you're talking about. And I think I finally got it. You're mad that someone criticized you for using a toy as your avatar while Blaze of Arcana uses a picture of a toy within her talk sprite set. And if this is the angle you're trying to take, whoever told you not to use a toy as your avatar would be wrong because that's not the issue with your production. Hell, I wouldn't even say the fact that you're recording a toy as your avatar itself is the problem. It's the fact that you record the original video on your phone. You can use, really, whatever the fuck you want as your avatar, and unless it crosses a line like, say, Uncropped Porn Folder or Adolf Hitler, both real examples, by the way, I don't think anyone's gonna necessarily care. I mean, I've seen park benches, helicopters, and race cars in some of the earlier videos in the CC, rocks and potatoes a little later, and fuck, you don't even have to stick to one avatar as far as most people are concerned, given how many people have done avatar tests. So I'm not sure who was telling you what, but they're wrong. And you using this complaint to rail against Blaze of Arcana is also wrong. What type of computer error doesn't allow you to take a screenshot with the print screen method? Could you maybe give us some context as to what that error could possibly be? Not everyone knows this doodle, so what is the error? And if such error exists, then there could be somewhere as to where Joshua could get this fixed. You see another part with dragging out your bleed? He's repeating the same thing! That might even take up half of the video. Okay, but he's not even dragging out his point. I get you may not be familiar with something like this given the insert video length here, but there in fact exists this wonderful technique called expanding upon your point so people understand where you're coming from. Blaze of Arcana used this first bit of the point to bring back up some workarounds to a hypothetical tech issue I brought up that prevented Joshua from taking a screenshot and giving us evidence as to what was said in a Skype conversation that predates this video. Skype. God, I feel old. At me when you remember Newgrounds.com as a thing. But anyway, back to my point. Blaze then, following this, asks what sort of tech issue I could be alluding to in my hypothetical, which, yes does ignore how there is more to my point, and that I'm merely using said point as an example of something that could be happening to prevent the screen cap from being shown off, but regardless, this doesn't repeat the previous aspect of the point of the screen cap workarounds itself. Then Blaze says that regardless of whatever tech issue that Joshua may have, that he could probably fix the issue within his computer in an attempt to showcase that Joshua, regardless, does not have any reason for not showing us the evidence to the aforementioned conversation he was utilizing within his initial commentary on my MLP review. And I would just like to give a casual reminder that this 
beast of a video stemmed off of me not liking a My Little Pony movie. And then it evolved into the blob that ate everyone, and the world was never the same again. What if he cleared his Skype history before Spirit's video came out? Okay, honestly, this is a purely what if situation. A say what if it said sis are bad? Yes, that is in fact what she was saying. What are you gonna do about it? Actually prove her wrong about how what ifs can be done well if need be? That wouldn't even be that hard considering what the full context to my point is against Demon Slayer. Alright, this is fun to do sometimes. Let me take an argument that you're using that I also used against the same video and play Devil's Advocate. So Joshua says that he can't screenshot the evidence that he needs to provide. While yes, push, gazo, and shift plus print screen all work wonders, what if he's having some form of computer issues and he actually cannot screen cap the conversation between he and I all those months ago? What if he cleared his Skype history before Spirit's video came out? What if it is actually the former option and he doesn't actually just know these things? You sure as hell aren't giving him any options to help him out, you just call him lazy and move on. Fucking great. I'm using an iPad. I have screenshot, but it won't allow me to screenshot Skype calls, unless you can think of an app that can help me out with that. Better yet, do? You wouldn't know an app that can help me out with that. I can do you one better. Being an iPhone user myself, I happen to know pushing the front circle button and the side power button at the same time can screenshot whatever's on your phone at any given time. So yes, there still technically isn't any excuse to not have screenshots. That said, Slayer surely isn't helping at all. The entirety of the hypotheticals I bring up against Slayer of Demons are purely to explain to him how he should be bringing up ways to actually go about getting the screenshots instead of just him claiming he's lazy and calling his point finished. Because with how Demon Slayer was doing it, he was acknowledging how Joshua could have maybe not known how to get the screenshots, but instead opted into just railing against him instead without much further elaboration to his point or critique. Did you say cocksucker? No, I didn't say cocksucker! Well, you are right, that is required to do research. Okay, why do you have these two other people's jokes while we use the skip screen? I tried to be funny when you use those as your skipping clip. Ugh, I'm too tired to go on another tirade right now. Sarah, if you may... Well then, Mr. Nicholas, didn't you say earlier during your presentation that humor is subjective? And yet, here you're berating her use of skip cards because you don't find them funny. Why is it okay for you to not abide by the rules you yourself established, young man? Because of that, I'm giving this project a D-, minus. but you can make over if you take extra homework and over the weekend write me a three-page essay on why Bakugan Battle Brawlers for a Nintendo DS is a cinematic masterpiece and get it on my desk by Thursday. Furthermore, yes, Nicholas, humorous skip cards do exist to be funny. That is indeed the point. You basically are not doing research yourself when there were opportunities for you to talk to her. That's quite hypocritical of you telling Spirit to do her research, yet you don't do any research or provide any evidence whatsoever. Why to go to contradict yourself? Since when was hypocrisy a contradiction? And more importantly, since when was hypocrisy incorrect? Yeah, you weren't 100% wrong on this. Who was just this on us one time in that sentence? Hypocrisy actually doesn't prove you wrong. God, Obscurian, I can't believe you would dare to agree with something Doodle Tone said, you horrid piece of filth! You know what? I'm gonna argue Slayer of Demons' point again, because there's another point that I could have made against it that I didn't even realize in 2017. That's quite hypocritical of you since you don't do your own research. He says, without examples of Joshua not researching something. Like, sure, we could bring up the fact that he didn't know how to screen cap conversations, but the thing is, you opted to call that laziness instead of going with the idea that Joshua just merely didn't know. So I can't even give you this as an implied example. This was just a no you without any line of reasoning behind it. Try again. Guys, look, she said the thing! That's another thing. I at least tried to show some proof. You on your head don't try to prove me wrong by doing your own research. Alright, but where's your proof? Yeah, whoever even edited this, probably Doodle. There's this little thing. Get the people. What? How? How with that? But why? He. Other people. They do research here. So. Yeah. A while. So. Continuing the research on Switch right here is pointless. That. Those... maybe... words... At this point, even the Martians are confused by what you're trying to say. Portal that allows for travel. I mean, we get story behind the dazzling, which are basically sirens, and if you know sirens are, you basically get the gist of the plot. Well, according to Google, 
In Greek mythology, they were beautiful yet dangerous creatures that led sailors to their doom. Here they just sing the feet. Using Google as your title reference is about as credible as saying you used Wikipedia and makes it seem like you of all people didn't do your research. Okay, ask me this. If I look at books, computers, etc., what is a siren? If you can't figure it out, then that means you have to look it up somewhere. Computers, Google, and Wikipedia are my only sources that can provide information. So, the only sources of information by your logic are Google, Wikipedia, and computers. You do know that you can gather research from other websites, not just Google, Wikipedia, and so on. So, what does that matter? That's the sources he chooses to use. Are you telling him he's incorrect? No? Then what the fuck is the point of this interjection? Problem. Wikipedia can be edited by just about anyone, meaning the sources can be just untrustworthy as a whole. You are the untrustworthy. Again, so again, it's happening. You're not being able to hurt because the thing. Because the thing. Because the thing. Fuck this commentary, man. This might just be my new favorite series of words that just so happen to follow each other in an incoherent narrative. Back the halls with the depression. Ba -la 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 -la. Mood. You mean that he stole other people's jokes and skips me? What do you know this? I feel like we're arguing in circles. Didn't we just get through talking about humorous skip screens? I guess here he's trying to argue the thievery of jokes and less so whether or not the joke being stolen is funny or not, but like, this isn't necessarily joke thievery since it's using the clips in question by the individuals who came up with the jokes. Like again, Nick, this is used purely for the entertainment factor and is used in general as a way to tell the audience that Blaze is skipping to various points of the video and why this isn't even something to get upset over, it's just a clip being used at the end of the day. A lot of his commentaries came out to leave this website. Yeah, I seen his commentaries. Yeah, but where's your proof that he uses that tactic? I gotta repeat yourself a tent about Ooh. Another repeating point about how Blaze of Arcana is repeating herself. You're sure doing a good job practicing what you preach. Jeebus Jorbus, I've gotten more amusement out of an actual broken record. Furthermore, this time Blaze of Arcana is actually correct that there needs to be evidence shown. Since literally all there is from Joshua and I's co-op is just Joshua's word. Which doesn't really do a whole hell of a lot to prove that Demon Slayer was as destructive as Joshua claimed him to be. Because not everyone has seen Slayer's content before. And just saying that you've seen his content before doesn't mean anything because you don't show clips or proof. Someone get the Tylenol, I need help, and me. Do me a favor. How? How what? How is this cutout filler? How do we have this cutout filler? How did Blaze of Arcana put text on the screen? Is this even related to where you looked at on the screen? Like, what the fuck are you doing, Nicholas? And stop being there to be a toxic individual and actually give valid critique and counter arguments, else I have no reason to take you seriously as a content creator. Okay, this made me realize something very, very important here. What has Joshua done? Done. He's pretty much barely improved a whole lot in the last few months. A few months? The last few years? Maybe even the one. Were you trying to agree with Blaze here, or were you expanding upon this and trying to say that Joshua hasn't improved since the Joshua Tree video? Because if it's the former, blah, I don't care. Whether or not Josh has improved as of 2017 is irrelevant to 2020, or even 2018 when we first started this project because it was a year after the Joshua Tree's attempted full burial with this digging it up from his ashes. And if it's the latter, Blaze would have not known this since this is a video from a year ago as of your own video. On that note, since this was how you chose to end your video, it's time for final thoughts. Did I hear you right? We're finally done the video? Yep. It's final thoughts time. Oh, 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 me first, please. Please, pretty please, pretty please. Pretty please or cherry on top, please. I need this. Go for it. Yes, dabs. Anyways, Nick, I am going to keep my final thoughts short and concise. Actually edit in the video you're trying to cover instead of recording it because it just really dampens the quality of it and makes it hard to comprehend what you're even arguing. And relating to that, if you're going to record using a camera, at least get a microphone so we can hear what you're saying. I do understand you're probably in the younger demographic of commentators, but even then, mics usually tend to fall into the lower 30s and even 20s in some cases. 
But still, I can't understand if this is an issue you can't fix. But most of all, assuming you weren't using one, please actually script your content in the future. Or at least use some notes for general talking points so that you don't lose your train of thought midpoint. Do this and I won't have to reenact the plot of Steins Gate again in the near future. And personally speaking, I would appreciate that. So I want to reiterate that this video came from the darkest depths of mid-2018. And as of finishing this video, we are in early to mid-2020. Hopefully, depending on how soon Sarah got in his lines and post doodle tones to edit. But the reason we kept this video in the works is one, it's just fucking fun. And two, because a lot of these same issues appear even two years after this video was initially supposed to come out. As stated before, you still chose to record your screen, not use a script, mumble your points even more incoherently than Joshua even did in 2016. Okay guys, this is a fun response to Christian 2.0. And overall, just chose to keep the quality of your commentaries in a stasis that's not what you should be keeping them in if you want to get a point across. But even removing your poor production from the equation, we still have your argumentative quirks that still need to be addressed. The amount of unneeded interjections that we have seen from both your video on Deadeye and your video on Blaze of Arcana is pretty staggering if I may be honest. Because I don't even know what points were being made half the time, because if you weren't mumbling, your word choices and placement of points gets to be so disjointed that it muddles every chance for a coherent discussion to be had. Plus your arbitrary borderline rule set I've noticed you pushed at the time that even leaked into this project over the course of the 20 minutes we covered. Like sure, we'll tell certain commentators that they probably shouldn't do something if it causes problems with their videos, but that's only because it hurts the quality overall. That said, they're not rules, they're critiques. And you can always disagree with criticism. But yet some of your critiques and complaints just feel so arbitrary half the time. For example, your constant harping on Blaze for her comedy skits used in her skip cards that you called theft because it technically wasn't Blaze using her own jokes as skip cards. Or the aforementioned telling of people to not cover old topics in several of your other videos, even if someone could bring something new to the discussion that had not been previously brought up. And that's not even covering the arbitrary double standards that you also have in regards to that. How you say that people can't use media clips and commentaries because they're overused, despite the fact that with how many different media sources there are, that you're effectively limiting the use of anything new because of what older commentators used to do. And God knows how many more I'm missing given your expansive commentary career of supposedly 235 commentaries. Mind you, this is just the commentaries you have numbered. This doesn't take into account your unnumbered commentaries or your 90 some odd responses to Halo fan, which, by the way, a side note, you really should stop giving him the time of day he He's only in it to make you mad. Some with titles that are spelled out to be rules. This is horribly limiting, because there's always ways that you could push doing certain things within commentaries that you're just telling people not to do instead of trying to tell people what they could do better overall to fix their videos. Commentaries are meant for critique and entertainment mostly. At least that's what most of us say our commentaries are for. But given just how overall you execute your videos in general, I'm not sure if that's the case here. However, if critique is something you wish to give, perhaps fix what we have told you in the production field first, then maybe cut the unneeded fat from the argumentative factor. You can do better, it just takes listening to what we have given you today and take into consideration. Why do I smell smoke? Oh yeah, the gears caught fire a while ago, didn't you notice? No, I was too busy giving final thoughts to check my surroundings. This is fine. Oh shit, I remember my evil scheme now! Did you now? Ah, shit, who called the police? You see, while you were giving your final thoughts, I had Robodoodle go and pull the alarm. First the pink robot, now this. Why is technology always cock-blocking me? Stop! You violated the law. Pay the court a fine or serve your sentence. Your stolen goods are now forfeit. 